Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle, the director of Nature Alliance School. We've had a lot of requests for some videos on tomahawk throwing simply because basically every class I teach now, we do a section on how to throw some tomahawks. It's a lot of fun, so I'm going to do that on video for you today. Glad you're with us. Suffice it to say that all tomahawks are not created equal. There are a bunch of companies that are now making some tactical versions of tomahawks. Um, there's actually been a confirmed kill, and I believe is in Iraq, with a tomahawk from a distance, not close proximity. So, uh, tomahawks, I guess, are in vogue again, although I've been throwing them all my life, so it's not anything new to me. However, I want to show you some things. First off, this is a good throwing tomahawk, and what I mean by that it's got a good surface edge right here, plenty of edge, and I'm going to have a lot of details on the blog on all the exact measurements on this. And it doesn't have a hammer pole on it, okay? So what I mean by hammer pole is something like this. This is a good worker of a tomahawk, okay? Basically has a cutting surface on it as well as a hammer surface on it as well. I'm not saying that you can't utilize this as a weapon. You can definitely hit somebody in the head with that or hit someone anywhere else with that and utilize that as a weapon. Matter of fact, it's documented in several diaries from Frontier Times. However, uh, that's not what the purposed design of that head is. This one is a bag axe, basically a small worker's axe. This is not a thrower, okay? One of the things you wanna get when you get a throwing tomahawk is you wanna make sure that the head slides up from the handle. Basically, this head slides down onto the handle which is gonna make it real easy for it to come off, okay? Now, with that said, this is my useful tool that I can, my large cutting tool I take with me on virtually everything that I go on. Hammer pole on one side, cutting surface on the other side. Now, when you get into throwing these things, there's gonna be a couple of versions that I recommend you go for. This is basically a cold steel, incredibly cheap, and when I say cheap, inexpensive, uh, tomahawk thrower. Uh, I think they call it the Frontier Hawk or something of that nature. It's got a set screw that really doesn't do much of anything. Um, and then this one right here is made by Beaver Bill. Uh, Beaver Bill is one of the best in my opinion. I've got uh, at least five of his, I've got three of his throwers, a hammer pole, a bag axe, and then I bought my dad a small bag axe. Um, fantastic, fantastic uh, blacksmith, I highly recommend bill for everything that he's done on uh, he's made knives and hawks and all sort of other things so check him out i'll have a link for him down below and what we're going to look at is throwing these two and i've got several of each but basically what we're going to do i'm going to show you how to set up a tree so that you can throw into it um, because it's easier to find a dead tree than it is to set a cross section up which is probably the best surface to throw into but not everybody has a chainsaw and you can you can easily get these Frontier Hawks on Amazon. Um, you can order these real easy like these Coach Steel Hawks and then find a dead tree and you're good to go. I do not, do not recommend you throw into a green tree. Um, that's just bad mojo all the way around, so don't do that. A lot of people get aggravated at me that ah, it's not gonna hurt the tree. Well, basically when you open the tree from the outside of the bark into the inner layers of the bark, you're opening a wound where infection, in essence, can get into that tree. So don't do that, find a dead tree, and uh, I'm gonna show you how to prep it up and get it ready to go. So we've got two dead trees here, and basically what we've got going on is that this one has lost the bark a considerable amount of time ago, and so me just standing here throwing these, or not throwing, but uh, chunking these into the wood right here is a fairly easy thing in this close proximity. However, because the bark has been off this, this one's gotten incredibly hard. So if you're brand new to throwing tomahawks, this is gonna be pretty difficult. So what I like to do is find a dead tree that's still got some bark on it like this guy. And then it's real easy to get the bark off. This actually is a good survival tree too. You can find a lot of grubs and stuff in this bark. So what's gonna happen is that this surface right here is gonna be a lot softer. You can hear this right here. If I hit this several times, you can hear that it's dead because there's a lot of moisture still there. Whereas on this one, every single time, there is a lot of moisture there. Pardon that intrusion, I had to get the phone turned off. <laughs> so you can hear when I hit this tree, it's not nearly as, 
as uh, dry and hardened as when I hit this one. So in my opinion, choosing a tree like this, particularly for a beginner, is gonna be a good choice. So if you get it prepped right, this is what's gonna happen. It's gonna stick rather easily. So the first thing you need to make sure that you do is get proper distance between you and the target, the target being this tree. I recommend for those that are beginning to take five steps. And basically your intent is to get five steps that are three foot in length. So basically you're right around the 15 foot mark from your target. So if we do that, one, two, three, four, five. That's the spot I wanna stand on. So I turn around, I'll talk about form in just a second and throw. And that'll put it almost every time for just about anybody right where you need it to be. So again, real simple like one, two, three, four, five, and then mark it if you want to. That way you know where you're coming back to. Either scrape it with the, the leaves off the area if you're in a leaf litter area or just mark a piece in the grass or just stick a stick in the ground so you know you can come back to the same point. Because basically, in any type of target acquisition, throwing, shooting, uh, punching, whatever it is, you want to decrease the number of variables when you're beginning so that you can start to pick away at what your problems are. And so in this particular case, I come back to the same spot every time. Now with that said, I also wanna have the same exact grip on the, the tomahawk as well as the same form by which I utilize it. So the way I recommend uh, teaching beginners, and, and it seems to work real well, and I've taught everywhere from six-year-olds to six-year-olds how to throw tomahawks, is basically you imagine that this handle is somebody's hand and you want to come up and shake it, like shake their hand. So if I come up and do a handshake with you, it's real easy for you to grab the blade. You don't want to have this 90 degree grip to it, okay? That's a good fighting grip. This is what I would have for a fighting grip. However, for throwing, I'm going to have this canted grip, just like I'm shaking a hand. So here's 90 and here's that canted grip. Basically what this is setting up is the opportunity for you to release it smoothly and that release is very important. So I'll get profile to you a little bit closer now. Basically what I want to do is that, and you'll have to find your own way whether some people like to step back and step forward and throw. Personally, I just like to stand here and throw. Uh, it's, you need to find what works for you and you'll find that distance as well. But here's the form. Once I grip my tomahawk as if I'm shaking hands with it, I'm gonna bring it up, don't let it fall back. Don't let it fall behind you. You wanna bring it up above your head and when you release, you release straight out in front of you and a lot of times I tell people and this seems to help, you wanna point at your target. And so as I release, I, I ne don't necessarily have to point at my target but in my mind's eye, I point at my target. The next part of this was immortalized in the movie The Patriot with Mel Gibson and all that good stuff. Nice tomahawks and good friends of mine made the tomahawk that uh, Mel Gibson carried in that movie. Uh, right here from Kentucky. So with that said, one of the things that you need to do is when you're aiming at your target, you need to, and this is what was said in the movie, aim small, miss small. It's real common. Anybody that shoots or throws anything or punches has the same mindset. Aim small, miss small. What's happening there is if I try to hit the tree I'll probably hit the tree with a tomahawk, but it just won't be accurate. It might hit the top of the head, it might hit the handle, it might do any number of things. However, if I aim small, what I'm gonna do is pick out a very tiny spot on that tree, find a small dot, and throw at that dot on the tree. It might be a, a, a piece of mold, it might be a piece of bark that's hanging on, anything that you can find one small piece of, about the size of a pinky fingernail, and throw at that target rather than just the whole tree. If you try to throw too hard, it just never works, okay? Well, that said, you just wanna come up, breathe, and relax. It's like, any, again, it's like any other target acquisition, shooting or anything. You basically wanna relax and breathe through your throw. And so as I come up to the line, I'm gonna turn, breathe, and out. And as I breathe out, I release my tomahawk, aim small, miss small on my target, and we'll see if it hits. Let's start from the top. So we're gonna start at our target. One, two, three, four, five steps. That's our area where we're gonna throw from. I wanna handshake with my tomahawk. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Turn to address my target. Find a spot where I can aim small, 
miss small, bringing above my head. And as I release, I'm gonna breathe out and point towards my target. Again, now this is where it gets fun if you're throwing with other people. If you're in competition, you'll bust each other's handles out and try to knock it out. Now with that said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim small, miss small off to the right this time so I don't hit my own tomahawk. So that is it. So I'll give you a couple of hinters, uh, a couple of pointers to help you out, and then we'll be done with this video. I'm gonna go in detail and, and make a series out of this, I think. I'm really digging this. So again, here's some pointers as you're doing this. And I know what you're thinking. That was the first take. I'm not lying. I'm, if I'm lying, I'm dying. First take. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, I don't do that every time. Um, but with that said, it's fairly simple to throw tomahawks. That's one of the reasons I'm getting all my students to do it in basically every class because it's fun. There's a lot of immediate feedback. And what I'm going to do in the next video is I'm going to show you some problem areas that come up and how to correct them. All right, so here's some pointers for you if you want to get started throwing on your own. Number one, it's fun as heck, so get in on it. It's, it's, there's no doubt about it that it's fun. Um, a beaver bill tomahawk, worth every single penny that you'll spend on it. There's no doubt it's gonna be more expensive than a cold steel tomahawk that's made in Taiwan. This guy makes his tomahawks in Ohio, US of A. So with that said, um, it's a little bit more expensive, but quite frankly, it's a better tomahawk head. He's got better handles and hey, he's an American. All right. Now with that said, um, the coach steel tomahawk is probably a good way for a beginner to get started in that it's a lot less expensive. And if this is what is in your budget, I'd rather you get this because it's in your budget and because this one might not be in your budget. However, again, uh, if you can get this one, get it. If not, get the Code Steel. I think it's, again, the Frontier Hawk. Um, be prepared that you're going to need to buy some more handles because you're going to bust them up. This one's only been utilized on one trip. As you can see, it's getting busted up. Matter of fact, I think this is the handle that was replaced before the last trip because it was split right down the middle. Uh, somebody jacked it really good, which is pretty fun. With that said, uh, buy some extra handles. If you get them from Beaver Bill, he's got all kinds of handles. The handles that I recommend are either hickory or ash. Those are the ones that are going to last quite a bit longer. I don't even know what this Code Steel Tomahawk handle is made out of. It probably says it's something, but it's something else. But with this set, with that said, the uh, this is hickory, and I've got a couple ash on my Beaver Bill Hawks too. So you can try those out. Those are incredibly hardwoods and good choices for you. With that said. I'm glad you're with us. It's a lot of fun. If you dig this video, then subscribe to our channel if you so please. We'd really appreciate that. Uh, give a thumbs up on the video. Share it as much as you like on Twitter, Reddit, Facebook, where it is that you do social media. Come on, join in. Let's learn together.